On September 3rd, 2023, Blue Beetle finally managed to drag itself past 100 million at the global box office, and it really got me thinking, what's the most efficient way to dispose of a dead body these days? Wait, what? Uh. It really got me thinking that there's no more appropriate metaphor for the sad state of the superhero genre than this movie. A bland, generic and creatively inert project sharted out by a studio that's out of ideas and energy, doing nothing that hasn't been done a million times before and roundly ignored by completely apathetic audiences. And what's funny is that it's the kind of film that would have comfortably raked in half a billion dollars if it had come out five years ago when people still actually cared about stuff like this. That time, however, has long since passed, and I think in retrospect, people are going to look back on 2023 as the year the superhero genre officially died. I mean, let's be real here, it's been struggling for a long time now, and people like me have been warning that it was headed towards irrelevancy, but this is the first year when there's really no way of hiding it anymore. Don't believe me? Let's look at the numbers, shall we? Back in 2019, there were 8 cinematic superhero releases, making a grand total of 6.92 billion dollars worldwide. By 2022, we had seven major theatrical releases, only this time they only managed to bring in four billion at the box office. That's a drop of more than 40% in just three years. And 2023 is shaping up to be by far the worst year yet. DC have already released three movies this year, all of which have flopped disastrously. In fact, none of them have even managed to break 300 million. When you add Black Adam into the mix, that makes four flops in a row for DC, and somehow I don't think Aquaman 2 is going to turn things around for them. Neither is James Gunn, the latest entry in a revolving door of producers tasked with salvaging whatever's left of their destroyed brand. Not only does he seem to be burning through fan goodwill with a series of unpopular creative decisions and embarrassing revelations, but he's been put in charge of a studio that might actually run out of money before he can even do anything. Things aren't looking much better for Marvel either. Ant-Man 3 brought in less than 500 million worldwide, nowhere near enough to cover its massive production budget, never mind turn a profit. Secret Invasion, starring Samuel L. Jackson, should have been a big hitter on Disney+, Plus, but instead turned out to be the lowest rated Marvel show ever made. I mean, at least Guardians 3 turned a profit with 845 million at the global box office, but I don't imagine that the Marvel execs were breaking out the champagne on this one. Not only did it make less than Guardians 2, even without adjusting for inflation or the massive hike in tickets prices, but it also represents a creative dead end for the studio that they can't exploit any further. In fact, the only unqualified success story has been Across the Spider-Verse, which brought in almost 700 million on a budget of just 100 million. That's great and all, but one successful movie isn't going to change the overall picture, and believe me, that picture's a depressing one. So far, superhero movies this year have earned 2.51 billion, a drop of 38% from the previous year, and 6 65% from 2019. And out of the six major movies released so far, only two of them have actually turned a profit. But drinker, you ingenious imbiber of intellectual elucidation, I hear you say. Surely it's unfair to pass judgement on 2023 when there's still a couple of big releases to come. Well, convenient setup for a perfectly timed piece of mockery. Not when those releases are Aquaman 2 and The Marvels. <laughs> One is the final pointless movie in a dead cinematic universe, starring what may be the most unpopular actress in Hollywood, for now at least, and the other is so hotly unanticipated that it's now been delayed and reworked five different times by Marvel. Even the director seems to recognise that the writing's on the wall when she made this amazingly frank admission to Total Film. I'll pitch Kevin's 17 versions of what can happen with all these women, and why, and how, and this, and that, and he's like, okay girl, and sometimes I think I've really got a movie going after this, and then other times I'm like, oh, they have this whole other plan that I'm not a part of. In terms of women-led films, and women as superheroes in particular, and excitement around that, I think it's really just about whether or not the movie's good. Especially now we have more and more films that are female-led, that are action-based or superhero-based. Jesus, calm down, Wordsworth, you're really dazzling us with your articulation here.
This right here is what happens when reality comes at you so hard and fast that there's just no way to spin it into anything else. She knows that this movie is going to be a fucking stinker that'll bomb harder than the Manhattan Project and is preemptively trying to manage expectations and deflect blame. She knows that this film can't just slide its way into a freshly lubed up marketplace like its predecessor did, where anything with the Marvel logo slapped on it was basically a giant money printing machine. The fact is, superhero movies are having to fight harder and harder to garner the kind of attention that would have been guaranteed a few years ago. There's an almost tangible feeling of weariness and resignation when a new movie gets announced now, like an aging man trying to rouse himself for another long shift at the same tedious job he's been working for decades. What used to be an exciting event to be savoured has become a kind of dull chore, something to be gotten through out of obligation rather than genuine desire or interest. And it's funny because everyone seems to have their own pet theory for why this happens. Depending on who you talk to, the problem lies lies in the oversaturation of the market with far too many projects, or the declining creative quality of the movies and TV shows being put out, or the increasing focus on identity politics and activism at the expense of good storytelling, or the arrogance and hostility of the movie studios as things start to go wrong, or the bland and formulaic nature of the films themselves, or even the dreaded superhero fatigue. For me though, I think the truth is a complex combination of all these different factors. I mean, let's start with the last one first, superhero fatigue. Or, more generally, genre fatigue. As far as I'm concerned, it's very much a real thing, and in the words of King Willie from Predator 2, There's no stopping what can't be stopped. Just like every other fad and fashion that's come and gone over the years, movie genres eventually become stale and played out as times change and people move on to new things. It happened to the adventure epics of the 1950s, the gritty crime dramas of the 70s, the gung-ho action movies of the 80s, and the comedies of the 90s. Why would you assume it wouldn't happen to the superhero movies that have been with us ever since the 2000s? Shit man, in genre terms they've had a pretty fucking good run. And in reality, it probably would have lasted a few more years if it hadn't been for the over-reliance on tired formulas and exhausting CGI spectacle, the oversaturation of the market with endless movies, TV shows, spin-offs and sequels that became almost impossible to keep up with, the hiring of untalented or underqualified writers and directors who are more concerned with pushing their own political worldviews than making good movies, and the increasingly aggressive attempts to attack and gaslight fans who dared to criticise their products and point out their mistakes. The truth is, they got too big, too lazy, too arrogant, too complacent, and it all contributed to an atmosphere of antagonism, frustration, and in the end, apathy. Audiences just don't care for superhero movies anymore. They don't care for the bland and boring characters and storylines being trotted out. They don't care for the tired formulas and played out spectacle, and they especially don't care for the studios making them. I mean, I don't imagine they'll ever vanish altogether. We'll still get the occasional Batman, Superman or Spider-Man movie, because those characters are so timeless and popular that they'll always find an audience of some sort. But the time of the superhero movie as the dominant box office genre is over. Over. And to be honest, I'm fine with that. It's about time Hollywood got shaken out of its money-soaked complacency and forced to come up with new creative ideas. It's about time we had more to look forward to in our summer movie seasons than an endless parade of capes and spandex and ironic self-aware jokes. It's about time we demanded something better in our entertainment. Now, just before I piss off, I wanted to bring one little thing to your attention. Many of you who tune into my open bar streams will be aware of the Critical Doggo, my somewhat faithful companion in the world of media criticism. Well, actually there's two of them, but legend has it they've never been seen at the same time and place. Anyway, whatever. The point is that the Doggos are retired racing greyhounds that I adopted from a rehoming centre not too far from where I live, and I have to admit, they made for excellent pets. The problem is, these places often operate on razor-thin margins, depending mostly on donations and volunteers just to stay running, and I felt like maybe I could do something to help out just a little. So with that in mind, I'm launching the Critical Doggo Plushie, a one-of-a-kind companion for the critical drinker, complete with sunglasses and his own little bottle of whiskey while he chills out on the floor. Probably explains why my doggos are always unconscious. Anyway, I'm going to be donating all of the profits of this campaign to my local Greyhound Rescue Centre, so if you'd like to buy yourself one, then the link is in the description. Or, if you're not into the whole plushy thing but you're interested in helping out a bit anyway, I'll also leave a link to the shelter's donation page. I don't want anyone to feel obligated to help out with this one, so don't feel like you have to pitch in or anything, but I'm hoping that perhaps we can do a little good and maybe help some animals who deserve a second chance at a happy life. 
Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.